some, the township of Longreach is isolated. For others, it is the centre of the universe. Life is where you live it, and for 3,000 inhabitants of this community, life is pretty good. John Westwood and Bob Godfrey visit the town. They eat and breathe the atmosphere of the surrounding communities of Ilfracombe, Aramac and Mutterborough and come away impressed. This is the real Australia. This is a wide brown sunburnt country. The vastness of this arid land bewilders the tourist and sometimes even the local. It's not unusual for a traveller to sit beside the road or stand on a deserted railway platform gazing at the enormity of this land. And although the landscape will change from moment to moment, there is no doubt who controls this environment. How it must have been in the early days of settlement, with only a horse or camel, no maps and only the stars to guide you. Australia is a land of contrasts, tropical rainforests, snow fields and endless desert plains and central western Queensland is little different. Our story begins with the explorers William Lansborough and Nat Buchanan who in 1880 were searching for new grazing land in this western district. In earlier days they had not appreciated the potential of the land that spread before them things were to change. Aware of the enormous grazing potential of central Queensland in 1886, the state government was keen to establish a railway terminus. Surveying the corridor west of Rockhampton, they soon established that this tiny settlement established by Landsborough and Buchanan in the central western outback would be ideal. And so it was declared in November 1887, the township of Longreach. Motivated by economic benefit, the rail link to Rockhampton was completed in 1892, and from that time on, the growth of Longreach accelerated. In the same year, 1887, several thousand miles away to the south, the Australian National Government were planning another rail link far more ambitious. This link would travel from Melbourne to the Gulf of Carpentaria, roughly following the route of the explorers, Burke and Wills. It was no coincidence. This line would also pass through the Longreach region. However, as history records, the lack of cooperation between state governments and a recession in 1893 effectively put this project on hold for 50 years. In 1942, General Douglas MacArthur proposed a rail link from Cloncurry to Darwin for the defence of Australia. Again, Longreach was in the path of development. MacArthur had offered to build this link free of charge using American steel and labour, only to have the Australian government reject the proposal. Over the following years, a number of proposals for major north-south rail links have been made and rejected, often set aside to favour projects such as the Snowy Mountain Scheme or contend with economic recession. Despite these setbacks, the little 1887 township of Longreach would flourish. First sale of town land was held at Bar Calden, in that year when the Queensland National Bank paid £107 for a prime location and was quickly followed by other businessmen keen to establish a presence in this newly established central Queensland rail terminus. Today, Longreach is a thriving rural township, living both in the future and in the past. 
proudly the caretaker of Australian aviation history, the national air carrier Qantas, after being established in Winton in the 1920s, saw its operational beginnings in Longreach. The original hangar still stands today and provides a vivid reminder of this important phase of aviation history. It was in this hangar that in 1926 the first aircraft built in Australia were assembled. Also standing as a monument to our history in aviation is the Qantas Founders Outback Museum with an impressive array of memorabilia, photographs and multimedia interactive displays. Longreach is pioneering country and just as well known for its people Many important folk, explorers, stockmen, artists, writers, poets and Aboriginal tribes have contributed significantly in some way to the history and lifestyle of Outback Australia. Together they stand immortalised in the Australian Stockman's Hall of Fame and of course descendants of these characters still inhabit this region and still contribute to the pioneering spirit and growth of this town and its environs. As was the case 100 years ago, access to rail can be a lifeline for rural and urban communities. The economic benefit to the nation as a whole of moving agricultural commodities, technology, human and natural resources from one end of this vast country to the other with the efficiency of cost and time is enormous. 116 years on, does history repeat itself? Is there an opportunity for a rail link between Melbourne and Darwin with direct links to Western New South Wales, Southern and South East Queensland, Central Western Queensland and the Northern Territory? Will our government support the project or will they again turn their backs on a rational opportunity to develop our country as did our pioneering forebears? The difference today is that this rail link appears to have the support of all governments and it will be privately funded. With Forsyth, a railhead was established in Longreach in 1892 and the township has thrived a century on despite the short-sightedness of some who have passed before us, we have the capacity to expand this country to its full potential, to develop trade and defend our nation. Australia is a vast country. Take this challenge. Stand on the end of the railway platform at Longreach and look in any direction. Only those who are blind cannot see the horizon.